On April 6, 1997, a gruesome crime took place on a rural road in Tennessee. A family of four from Kentucky Vidar, Delfina, Tabitha, and Peter Lillilid were traveling back home from a religious convention when they were ambushed by six individuals, members of a satanic cult. Vidar and Delfina Lillilid were a couple in their 30s who had two children, six-year-old Tabitha and two-year-old Peter. They were devout members of the Jehovah's Witness faith and were known for their commitment to their religion and family. The Lillilids lived in a small town in Kentucky, where they were well respected by their community. Vidar worked as a chemical engineer, and Delfina was a stay-at-home mom who homeschooled their children. The family's religious beliefs were a central part of their lives, and they often traveled to attend conventions and other religious events. On April 6, 1997, the Lillilid family had traveled to Tennessee for a Jehovah's Witness convention. The convention was held in Johnson City, and the family was among thousands of other attendees. During their stay, they met with other members of their faith, attended lectures, and participated in prayer and worship sessions. After the convention ended, the Lillilid family prepared to return home to Kentucky. They packed their bags, said their goodbyes, and got into their minivan to begin the long drive back. However, they never made it home. The family's journey home ended in a tragic and senseless act of violence. The Lillilid family was ambushed and murdered on a rural road in Tennessee by members of a satanic cult. The attack shocked the nation and remains one of the most horrific crimes in modern American history. As they drove back home, they noticed a vehicle behind them, which appeared to be following them. The family grew uneasy and decided to pull over at a rest area to take a break. At the rest area, they encountered six individuals who were members of a satanic cult. Natasha Cornett, Karen Howell, Joseph Reisner, Crystal Sturgill, Jason Bryant, and Dean Mullins were all between the ages of 14 and 20. They had been on a road trip, committing various crimes along the way, and had stopped at the rest area for a break. What started as a casual conversation about music and religion turned into a heated argument. The Lillilid family's religious beliefs clashed with the cult members' views, and tensions quickly escalated. The cult members became increasingly aggressive and demanded that the Lillilid family hand over their minivan. When the family refused, the cult members forced them at gunpoint to drive to a nearby isolated road. Once they arrived at the isolated road, the cult members forced the family to kneel on the side of the road. They then proceeded to shoot each member of the family, including the Tabitha and Peter. Vidar Lillilid, the father, had been shot point-blank in the face. Delphina Lillilid, the mother, had been shot multiple times in the chest and abdomen. Tabitha, the six-year-old daughter, had been shot once in the face, and Peter was shot twice with a small-caliber weapon. One shot entered behind his right ear and exited near his right eye. A second gunshot penetrated his back and exited through his chest. He was transported by a Lifestar helicopter to the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit at the University of Tennessee Memorial Hospital in Knoxville, where he was listed in critical condition. Peter required vigorous resuscitation, having sustained a contusion to his right lung with some residual bleeding in his right chest cavity. Doctors removed his damaged eye 11 days after the shootings. He remained in the hospital for 17 days before being transferred to a Knoxville Rehabilitation Center. When authorities arrived on the scene, they were met with a gruesome and shocking sight. The bodies of Vidar, Delfina, Peter and Tabitha Lillilid lay on the side of the road, their blood staining the pavement around them. The crime scene was one of the most disturbing and shocking ever seen by law enforcement. The brutality of the attack sent shockwaves through the community and the nation. After the bodies were discovered, an extensive investigation was launched, and the crime scene was thoroughly examined. Forensic experts were brought in to collect evidence and analyze the scene. The autopsies revealed the extent of the injuries inflicted on the family. The injuries showed a level of violence and cruelty that was almost unimaginable. The autopsy reports were presented in court during the trial, and the jury was left with a vivid picture of the brutality of the crime. The Lillilid family's deaths were a tragedy that rocked the nation. The family was mourned by their community, and their deaths were a reminder of the senseless violence that can occur even in the quietest of places. The six cult members involved in the crime were brought to justice, but the Lillilid family's loss will never be forgotten. 
the brutal shooting of the Lilith family shocked the nation, and law enforcement agencies were under immense pressure to apprehend the perpetrators. Within days of the crime, six suspects were arrested and charged with multiple counts of murder, kidnapping, and carjacking. The suspects were Joseph Reisner, Natasha Cornett, Karen Howell, Crystal Sturgill, Jason Bryant, and Dean Mullins. The investigation revealed that the suspects were members of a satanic cult and had planned the attack in advance. The group had been traveling to New Orleans, and the Lillard family's minivan was their ticket to get there. The suspects were apprehended in Arizona, where they had abandoned the Lillard family's minivan after crashing it. During their arrest, the suspects were uncooperative and showed no remorse for the crime they had committed. After their arrest, the suspects were extradited to Tennessee to face trial. The prosecution presented a strong case against the six suspects, and the evidence against them was overwhelming. The trial of the six defendants charged with the murder of the Lillard family was one of the most high-profile cases in Tennessee's history. The trial lasted for over a month, and the courtroom was filled with family members of the victims, journalists, and curious onlookers. The prosecution's case was based on the testimony of witnesses, forensic evidence, and the defendant's own statements to law enforcement. The prosecution presented evidence that the six defendants had planned the attack in advance, using the Lillard family's minivan as a means to get to New Orleans. During the trial, the defense argued that the six defendants were under the influence of drugs and alcohol at the time of the shooting and were not in their right minds. The defense also tried to cast doubt on the prosecution's case, arguing that the evidence was circumstantial and that the defendant's statements to law enforcement were coerced. The jury ultimately rejected the defense's arguments and found all six defendants guilty of multiple counts of murder, kidnapping, and carjacking. The sentencing phase of the trial was emotional and intense, with family members of the victims and the defendants taking the stand. The judge eventually sentenced the six defendants to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Are you all pleading guilty because you are guilty? Yes. Yeah. And I want each defendant to, to answer that individually. Um, Ms. Sturgeon? Yes. Ms. Mullins? Yes. Mr. Reisman? Yes. Mr. Bryant? Yes. Ms. Cornett? Yes. The verdict and sentencing brought some measure of closure to the Lillard family and their community. The trial also raised important questions about the influence of satanic cults on vulnerable individuals and the impact of drug and alcohol abuse on violent behavior. The tragedy of the Lillard family serves as a reminder of the need to address these issues and prevent similar acts of violence from occurring in the future. The Lillard murders sent shockwaves through the community and the nation. The tragedy touched the hearts of people across the country, and the story was covered extensively in the media. In the aftermath of the crime, many people were left wondering how such a senseless act of violence could occur. For the surviving members of the Lillard family, life would never be the same. The family was shattered, and the surviving members were left to cope with the loss of their loved ones. The community rallied around the family, offering support and comfort during their time of grief. The case also had a lasting impact on the criminal justice system. The trial raised important questions about the use of the death penalty in cases of murder and the role of mental illness in violent crimes. It also highlighted the need for better mental health services for those who struggle with drug and alcohol abuse and the impact of satanic cults on vulnerable individuals.